What is your name, please? I am William H. Brett. What is your name, please? My name is William H. Brett. What is your name, please? My name is William H. Brett. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real William H. Brett and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you. Thank you and good evening. It's nice to be back with our game of deliberate misrepresentation wherein our panel tries to figure out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. The tell the Truth is brought to you each week by Geritol, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast, America's number one tonic. And now let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Ralph Bellamy. My name is Kitty Carlisle. My name is High Gardner. <laughs> and I'd like to interrupt just long enough to give my very warm thanks to my good friend, Ralph Bellamy, for pinch hitting for me while I took a little vacation. Thank you, Ralph. Pleasure, very much. Bud. Now, these three gentlemen all claim to be William H. Brett. Of course, only one is the real William H. Brett. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they do not have to stick to the truth. Now, panel in front of you, there are copies of an affidavit. Will you please follow along while I read the original? I, William H. Brett, am the director of the United States Mint. I was appointed to that post by President Eisenhower. As part of my duties, I am responsible for all the coinage operations in this country. I am also responsible for the operation of the United States assay offices and for the safeguarding of all the gold at Fort Knox. Signed, William H. Brett. <laughs> now, panel, these three people all claim to be William H. Brett, the director of the United States Mint. Only the real William H. Brett is required to answer your questions truthfully, and of course, each of you will question as usual until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you will be required to cast your vote for the one person who, in your opinion, is the real William H. Brett, the director of the Mint. We'll start with uh, my good friend, Ralph Bell. Ralph? Maybe a little rusty, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Two weeks vacation. Number one, uh, who is a former actress who was uh, subsequently a former treasurer of the United States? I don't know. Number two. Nellie Ross Taylor. Number three. I don't know. Uh, number one, how many mints are there in the United States? There are three. Two of them, however, are, act are acti actively engaged in minting coins now. And uh, number two, where are the mints? The two that are actively engaged in producing coins at the present time, Mr. Bellamy, are in Denver and Philadelphia. Uh, sorry, Ralph. Kitty? Number two, can anyone get in to see the gold at Fort Knox? No, Miss Carlyle, no one can get in to see the gold at Fort Knox. Well, how do we know there's any gold there? <laughs> I think you'll just have to take my word for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look like an honest fellow. Thank you. One of them's supposed to be a liar. I only want <laughs> two of them. <laughs> and I'd like to say that I think our whole foundation is pretty shaky right now. <laughs> Uh, number three, how do you withdraw coins from circulation? Those that are unfit are returned to the mints. By what, by what means? Oh, through the Federal Reserve Banks. Hi, Gardner. Number two, I don't think it's a secret. Can you tell me approximately how much gold is buried at Fort Knox? Oh, I guess about... Uh... Ten to twelve billion dollars, Mr. Gardner. Uh, would you, number three, care to answer that? Well, How much gold is buried at Fort Knox? Uh, it's around twelve billion. Mm -hmm. Number uh, one, can you tell me approximately how much a gold bar weighs? Four hundred ounces. How much is that in pounds? Well, that's about. Uh... <laughs> I don't mean English pounds. I mean. Uh, <laughs> Well, there are six, there are 12 ounces uh, to a pound, Troy, 
And if you divide 400 by 12, you get the answer. Well, I'll know that tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be real late. Uh, number uh, number two, about I'm sorry, how much that's school... That's all we have time for from you. I have to go to Polly Bergen. Polly? I, I tried to add that up for you. <laughs> I ended up with 30-something or other. Um, number one, who is the treasurer of the United States? Uh, Robert Anderson. Uh, number two, who is the secretary of the treasurer? Secretary of the treasurer? Yes. Ms. Bergen? Uh, Robert Anderson. He's the new secretary. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, I'm afraid I don't. Uh, you said he was the treasurer, and you said he was the secretary of the treasurer. Is that correct? I'll stand on my statement, Mr. Thank Perkins. you very much. Uh, number three, uh, what is the woman's name who signs all the, the, the dollar bills? Priest. Uh, Ralph? Uh, number one, we have uh, dimes, nickels, dimes, and quarters, and so on. Is there ever a 20 cent piece? I don't think so. Number two, is there ever a very. Uh, hey, the time is up. It's time to vote. You'll have to wonder what he was going to say. And without consultation, panel, will you mark your ballot and select thereby number one, number two, or number three? Remember, please, the team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote, which means if they fool the entire panel, they may divide as much as $1,000. Mark your ballots, panel? Yep. Polly just did. Polly, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. Actually, uh, after giving this a great deal of thought... You were wrong. <laughs> I think I'm wrong. <laughs> but, no, I thought that Ivy Baker Priest was the treasurer of the United States, and they said she wasn't, but number three said she signed the bills, which may be altogether different, so I voted for him. Good girl. <laughs> Ralph, what was your reasoning? Number two. <laughs> number two seemed to have a lot of information, and I think he was about to give me a yes answer on the 20 cent piece. There was one, I happen to know. Kitty Carlisle, for whom did you vote? Number two. Well, he said I'd have to take his word for it that there was all that gold in Fort Knox, and I trusted him. Ah. <laughs> all right. How about you, Hi? Your vote was for... I voted for number two also because uh, he confirmed what the first gentleman said. Uh, there is between 12 and $14 billion buried at Fort Knox. And besides, you look like a guy who once sold me a gold brick. <laughs> <laughs> well, gold brick or not, I hope you've made up your minds. You've had our reasons and our voting. Now, I'd like we're to change my vote, I'm please. I'm sorry, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you can change it after. We'll find out now which one of these three distinguished-looking gentlemen is the director of the United States Mint. Will the real William H. Brett please stand up? <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Molly, I, I saved you from a fate worse than death. I hope you realize that. Oh, my gosh, I don't believe it. <laughs> All right, let's find out about That's the others now. Number one, would you, number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? I, I am uh, Herbert D. Lanner, of Montclair, New Jersey, and I make and sell uh, special equipment. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and number two, what about you, sir? My name is John Mahler. I live in Harrington Park, New Jersey. I'm resident partner and manager of the Madison Avenue office of Merrill, Lynch, Pierce, Fenner, and... <laughs> 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 Uh, yes, Polly. You know, that's the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not to the rest, because there were three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 from Jarrett Hall. Gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed your visit. Thank you very Thank much. Good night and the best of good night. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, we'll put our happy Polly and the rest of the panel to work again on three new challengers in just a few minutes. All right, may we have our next team of challengers, please? What is your name, please? My name is Tanya Villiers. What is your name, please? My name is Tanya Villiers. What is your name, please? 
My name is Tanya Villa. All right, panel, you've had a look. Will you now follow along with your copies of the affidavit while I read the original? I, Tanya Vilia, am a former member of the Yugoslavian Olympic team. Although my major athletic activities have been in swimming, I was also the junior shot put champion of Yugoslavia when I was 15 years old. In 1954, I escaped through the Iron Curtain. And I am now looking forward to the day when I will become a citizen of the United States of America. Signed, Tanya Villa. <laughs> now, once again, panel, we have three people this time claiming to be Tanya Villa, who escaped not too long ago from behind the Iron Curtain. Remember again, please, that only the real Tanya Villa must answer your questions truthfully. Question until you hear the signal, and then we start this round with uh, Kitty Carlisle. Number three, have you ever been to Brioni? No. Can the average Yugoslavian go to Brioni? Yes. Number two, uh, where is Abatia? Well, it's on the Adriatic coast. Number one, how heavy is the shot? Oh, around uh, four kilos. And how far do you have to put it? Well, if you're lucky, or put a... Uh, well, that's up to person. Well, what is the, what is sort of a, a record put? What was my record? Yes. It was about nine meters. Nine meters. Yes. That's how many yards? Oh, well. Oh, uh, that would be... Polly, do it in your head now. <laughs> I don't even know what a meter is. <laughs> While you're doing it, let's go along to oh. High Gardner. High. A meter is something you find on a cab and throw, a new small cab. <laughs> Thank you very much, Todd. <laughs> Uh, number two, what have you in common with a man named Jim Fuchs? Nothing that I know of. <laughs> Anything you know of, number three? No. Number one? Nothing. Well, he was a great shot putter. <laughs> uh, 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 number one, uh, can you tell me what a person has to do to get a dog out of Yugoslavia? Let's say you have a pet and you want to get it out. How do you do it? I don't know nothing about it. Would you know number two? Well, you have to get a permit, just like anywhere else. Uh-huh. What about you, number three? Would you answer that? Smuggle it out. <laughs> uh -huh. Number three. Or in other words, shot put it out, huh? <laughs> Polly? <clears throat> well, I'm not going to fool around. What I know about shot putting, you could put on the head of a pen. But uh, from the answers that they gave on Jim Fuchs, I don't think they know too much about it either, so we're all right. <laughs> uh, number one, are you sure that one of you are this girl? <laughs> Are you asking number one this question? Yes. <laughs> Polly wants to know if you're sure that one of you are this girl. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, number two, could you tell me, where were the Olympics held the last time? In Melbourne, Australia. Where were they held in 1952? Helsinki. Uh, number three, who won the champion shot put in 1952 in Helsinki? Well, Yugoslavians were not allowed to go out of the country. So I we were see. there. Uh, number one, who won in uh, 1956 the champion shot put? Uh, I don't know. Number two? Ralph Bellamy. Well, <laughs> I'm going to try something I tried once before and see if I can make it work this time. I'm going to have to write the answers down. If it isn't too impertinent, number one, how old are you? Oh, 22. 22. Number two, how old are you? 25. 25. Number three, how old are you? 23. 23. And isn't it wonderful? Number one, in what year did you... Uh, uh, when you were 15 years old, in what year did you win the uh, uh, shot put championship, junior shot put championship? Uh, 1950. 50? Number uh, two, what year did you win? 1947. 47. Number three, what year did you win the shot 49. put? 49. 49, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> While you're figuring out by trigonometric methods, Ralph, we'll see what happens, because we have time to vote now and no more consultation. Barely time to add up your totals, and let's see. If you have your ballots marked for number one, number two, or number three. Okay, panel, you all set? Polly, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number two. Uh, actually, uh, number one I voted for because I think that uh, she has sort of the, the stance of, of a real athlete. Not that I would know what an athlete's stance is like, but... Uh, and also, she, she said that you had to get a permit to get dogs out, 
And that I know about. I see. All right. May I have the stamp? Uh, Ralph Bellamy. Oh. Uh, number one. Oh. It's the only one that adds up right, the way I work it out. <laughs> well, let's see how good you are at logarithms. How about you, Kitty? You voted for... Number two. Huh? Well, number three says that the average Yugoslav could go to Brioni, and that's not true because that belongs to Mr. Tito, and I don't think anyone is allowed to go there anymore. And I couldn't work. I wrote all down what Ralph had, but I couldn't figure it out, so I voted for number two. <laughs> How about you, I? Well, I voted for number three because she said you practically had to smuggle a dog out of Yugoslavia, which is true because they consider the dog a working member of the, of the uh, whatever they call the slaves. <laughs> there. All right, there we are now. Votes are in. Our logarithms are completed, thanks to Ralph. And now no, don't you know something? I what? have to tell you, but they all add up properly. <laughs> <laughs> So it really comes down to eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Huh? All right, let's see how that works. We'll find out which one of these ladies recently escaped from behind the Iron Curtain because I'm going to ask right now for the real Tanya Vilia to stand up. Thank you. Number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? Yes, my name is Lisa Holt, and I'm a former professional skater, and at one time I was the Austrian skating champion, ice skating. <laughs> and number three, what about you? My name is Valde Zarina, and I'm a native of Latvia, and I'm now a professional dancer and a model. Well, if you could see the front of your desks, ladies, you would see that there were one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750. And Gerald Hall, for you to divide, thanks for being with us. Hope you enjoyed it. We did. Good night and good luck. Well, let's have our third team of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is Quing Non Robert Wong. What is your name, please? My name is Quing Non Robert Wong. What is your name, please? My name is Quing Non Robert Wong. All right, panel, may I direct your attentions once again to the copies of the affidavit which I am about to read. I, Quing Non Robert Wong, returned last year from Hong Kong where I went to learn Chinese. I worked my way through Harvard University by summer employment in a Chinese laundry. I am now a stockbroker with a major firm in Wall Street. Signed, Quing Non Robert Wong. <laughs> all right, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Quing Non Robert Wong, stockbroker. Again, will you question until you hear the signal, and may we start this round with uh, Polly Bergen. Um, number one, why did you go to Hong Kong instead of China to learn Chinese? Can't get into China right now. I see. Uh, number two, uh, who, uh, what is Hong Kong? Hong Kong is a British crown colony. I see. Uh, number three, uh, if, if you, do you have a seat on the exchange? No, I don't. You don't? No. Number two, do you have a seat on the exchange? No. Number one? No, it costs a heck of a lot of money to get a I seat. See. <laughs> well, that was my next question, so that takes care of that. Number three, where is Harvard? Where is Harvard? Harvard is in Cambridge, just out of, outside of Boston. Where did you live? Where did I, I lived in Lowell Hall. Uh, why did you work in a laundry? Uh, didn't you, uh, I mean, if you, how could you work in a laundry and then be a stockbroker? <laughs> I mean, uh, why didn't you work as a secretary or something? Or are you a good launderer? <laughs> <laughs> You worked in a laundry so we could clean up in Wall Street, right? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you oh, don't oh, you oh, that oh, oh, oh. Don't encourage you. You set that up for you. I really didn't. I'm ashamed. <laughs> Ralph, <laughs> number one, what's your farm in Wall Street? What's the address? Whitewell, 20 Broad Street. Number two. Filer, Bullard, and Smythe, 26 Broadway. Number three. Merrill Lynch, 575 Madison Avenue. <laughs> Who, which one of those is your boss? <laughs> well, I believe you've met my boss. He was one of the panelists in the uh, first uh, trio. His name is Mr. John Mahler. Kitty? Number one, uh, what is a taipan? 
high pan? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what you're referring to. You're referring to a, the boat or to what? Well, I'm asking you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two, what is your advice about the market? Uh, if you would care to come during office hours, I'd be glad to see you. <laughs> number three, what is Kowloon? What is Kowloon? Well, uh, Kowloon is uh, the peninsula on the mainland of China, which is part of Hong Kong. Is it close to, um, is it close to the border? Well, it's part of China. It's, it's right adjacent to communist China. Number two, what? what? Hi. Oh. <laughs> Number three, about how many people, percentage-wise, out of 100, let's say, would you say are direct stock owners of American uh, companies? Uh, of American companies? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it varies. I, I would say that uh, overall about uh, 30%. About what? About 30%. What would you say, number two? Uh, I guess about six million. And what would you say, number one? It's, uh, it's fairly high. It's around uh, 20 million. Uh-huh, 20 million. Uh, number three, uh, who is the uh, financial editor of the New York Tribune? I'm sorry, Mr. Gardner. I don't read the Tribune. <laughs> <laughs> well, how can you possibly follow the market? Number two. Uh... <laughs> on, that, <laughs> on that paper note, we'll call time. It's time to vote, so please mark your ballot panel and vote for number one, number two, I'm gonna or number three. Time. Okay, panel. All voted. Polly hasn't. Polly is. What is it, Polly? I voted for number three. Uh-huh. This is nothing personal against you, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I thought anybody uh, who didn't... No, I better not say that. <laughs> uh, after giving it due thought and consideration... Period. And thinking it out, I just yes. thought it was number one, so I voted for number three. All right. <laughs> How about you, Ralph? Number three. I haven't any very concrete reason. He just seemed to have more information and was quicker with it. Okay, Kitty, how about you? Number one, I don't think he speaks very good Chinese, so he had to go and learn it in <laughs> Hong Kong. <laughs> and hi, Gardner? I don't know. They were all confusing. I voted for three. He looks more like the type of guy who would just love to rip buttons off shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. There we have votes and reasons. I hope they're good ones. We'll find out now which one of these gentlemen is number the real two. stock number two. Two. Number two. Yeah. So number now, two. will the real <laughs> Queen Nan Robert Wong please stand up? Thank you very much, sir. Number one, did you tell us who you really are and what you do? I am Calvin Lee. I'm a Columbia Law student. I also uh, own and manage the oldest Chinese restaurant in New York, Lee's Restaurant in Chinatown, on the corner of Martin Pell Street. <laughs> and number three, how about you, sir? My name is Herbert Mark, and uh, I'm an architectural student at Columbia University and, and presently employed in the city planning division of uh, Voorhees, Walker, Smith & Smith, an uh, architectural firm. <laughs> well, all I can say is you fooled them all. You went right down the line there. <laughs> My goodness. How come nobody picked number two? Nobody had any hunches? For the same reason I picked number three. Who but knows? Right after you voted, you said you were sure it was number two. Well, gentlemen, let me tell you this little pleasant message. Fooling the entire panel means a total of $1,000 from Jarrett Hall. Divide it and enjoy it. Don't use Mr. Bellamy's slide rule. Good night and the best of good luck to you. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for tonight, except to say good night to my good panelists. Good night, panel. Good, good night, 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 bud. Good night, bud. And uh, I do have one more word, incidentally. Although progress is being made, mental health is still our nation's number one health problem. And you can help, believe me by supporting the Mental Health Association. Please do that, won't you, before you forget it. Right now, this is Bud Collier saying good night for Geritol and reminding you to tell the truth. <laughs> good night. Application for To Tell the Truth is arranged by American Airlines. Guests to flown to New York aboard American famous luxury flights with EC7 Mercury. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Cogman production.
in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Bergen's and Miss Carlisle's dresses by Molly Parnett.